Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. I am Sharonda and I am your host. Excuse my voice. <laughs> I'm still trying to shake back from the weekend. Uh, this past weekend was the Red Room experience and it was definitely an experience. Um, Y'all, when I get that microphone in my hand, it's like, I don't know, me and that microphone become one. And it's up with me. And a lot of times, I, I'm hooping and hollering and hyping everybody up on the mic. And the end result is, most times I don't have a voice afterwards. So this is the aftermath of it. So thank you, everyone, uh, who came out and enjoyed the show. Um, but this video, <laughs> and it just made me think because, you know, I tend to talk to women that's in my age group, um, at least within the uh, a ten year range. I'm gonna say, so I talk to women between the ages of forty and fifty. I'm gonna say it like that, um, and I'm right there in the middle. I'll be forty four in a couple of weeks, and it's always funny to me how when we're talking, we all tend to be going through the same thing, <laughs> and. You know, when you're young, you feel youthful, right? You move youthful. Your body lets you know that you're youthful, right? But when you stop having the, the mobility, like when I was walking the four miles every day, I'm going to be honest, my body felt much better, right? Whereas I, I, I got off the track and never got back on track with my walking. So my body is letting me know that. And the one thing um, that we were kind of laughing about was how when it's cold in an environment, we tend to get stiff, right? So I think y'all heard me say it over and over again that my man likes to keep the house at a certain temperature. For me, a comfortable temperature is between 70 and 72. That, that's comfortable for me, right? I just, I just need it to be, it don't, I don't have to be um, cold to be comfortable. I'm going to say it like that. We were talking and we were talking about how our bones get to like up when we get cold. But this is no different than when you're in the environment and you're cold and you're trying to have sex. Like your ass would get stiff and get to locking up when you're cold, right? So we were just kind of joking and laughing about that. Um, when I was growing up, we primarily had central air and heat. Uh, my mom wasn't big on running ceiling fans. She was, we never owned a house fan. We didn't need window units and there's nothing wrong with, you know, window units, but let's talk about the fan. Let's talk about the fan. My pussy don't like the fan at all, especially directly blowing on me. One it makes me cold. Two, it drives me out, right? I don't care how much lubricant you use. Not, don't, don't get me wrong, lubricant is your friend. But when you cold and dry, it's not a good time at all. So we were just kind of laughing and talking about that, right? So let's, talk, let's get into it. When the body is warm, especially your feet, and you can put socks on, your body will tend to relax more and you will actually be able to achieve more orgasms just as a result of wearing socks while you're having sex. Because if you can keep your feet warm, you can keep the rest of your body warm for the most part. OK, but when the body is warm, the muscles tend to relax. If any of you are chefs or people that cook, right, when you buy a steak from the, the grocer, and you get in the pack out the section that they keep the meat, the cooler. When you get home, you can't cook that steak right away because that steak, that steak's still tough and tight, right? But if you let that steak sit out for a couple of hours and get room temperature, the muscles in the steak start to relax. And you'll notice that the, the steak is not as tense. It's able to relax. The season is able to penetrate through it. You cook, 
You got the opportunity to have a great steak if you know what you're doing. But you don't cook a steak cold, okay? No, that's a steak. That's a piece of meat. We are human. We are flesh. We are no different. When we are cold, we tend to be more tense. When you are tense, you're not going to have, I'm not going to say that you can't have a good time. But if you allow the body to be relaxed, you can have a much better time. Okay? So, I just wanted to share that because that was one of the things that we were laughing about. Because my man is much younger than me. The woman that I was talking to, her man is much younger than her. And we was like, y'all done, done came over here and got us old ass women, you know, laughing. But now you got to accommodate us. <laughs> You got to you gotta be able to keep the house at a temperature to where we ain't balling up and feeling like our bones hurting. So, you know, we were just kind of laughing about it. And I said, you know what? I think there's some good information. Because one thing about me, I teach my life. And one thing about auntie, when she get in the bedroom, she can do what she do. But you're going to get a much better experience from me if I am relaxed and if uh, I'm not cold. If I'm cold, you're not getting the best that I got. you just not. It's not going to happen. I'm human, just like anybody else. But if my body is relaxed and at a good room temperature, oh, this ass going to whop and it's going to do everything that it needs to do. But if I'm cold, motherfucker, I'm ball up. All right? And again, don't forget, ladies, lubricant is your friend. I like silicone lubricant. That's my preference because I don't like to have to keep reapplying over and over and over again. All right? I use toy cleaner for my toys. I know you're not supposed to use silicone lube with silicone toys. Most of the toys they're making today is out of a silicone material. I use toy cleaner right after I use my toys. So I've never had an issue with it, but the rule is you do not use silicone with silicone toys. You use water-based lubricant. I don't like water-based lubricant. So I'll take the hit on the lubricant. I, I use the silicone lubricant with my toy, but I'm gonna clean my toys really, really good right after. I'm not going to give the silicone lubricant the opportunity to break down the materials in my toys. Okay? So, that's all I want to say about this lubricant. Um, I got a new toy. And I'm going to name this toy after me. So, my man tends to call me a F5 tornado. If you know anything about an F5 tornado, a F5 tornado will literally destroy anything in its path, all right? But not necessarily for bad reasons all the time, because sometimes um, great things happen in the rebuilding process, right? So we're going to call this toy F5, okay? I actually launched this at the book signing this weekend, and we sold a lot of these. It did very well. So it has two different heads on it for suction, right? So let's let's check out the suction first. We're just checking out the suction. And I bought my lip balloon. It looked like a titty kind of. Uh, when we're turning this one on, the power button is the very bottom button. Hold it three seconds. It's going to come on. As you can see, it's blinking. It lets me know that it's on. And then I'm going to turn the suction up. Y'all know when I'm operating these toys. There we go. Y'all see that? All right. So I just turned the suction on. This shows you that this toy does suck, right? It does suck. So if you like that little suction feeling, this toy will suck your clitoris, your vulva. It will suck all of that because it literally wraps around the vaginal lips so it sucks and then the button above it is going to be one where we release it and we just released it All right we have the tongue on it i'm gonna take the section off 
Now we left with the tongue. If you want direct stimulation with the tongue, you can remove the suction. Now, if you look at this tongue, one of the great things about this tongue is this tongue is wearing a condom. We can literally take the condom off the tongue. Why is it coming with a condom? Because sometimes you may opt to play with somebody other than yourself and you want to keep your toy safe for yourself, but you could cover it when you're using it with somebody else. Okay? So, toys today are coming with all kinds of options. And when I saw that this tongue had a condom that goes over it, I was just like, they own the something. They are really thinking about couples who participate uh, with sex with multiples. Because that is the way things are going. People are becoming very open with their sexuality today. They're not holding back. They're not missing opportunities because they're afraid that people are going to say something about them. People today are tending to live in their truth more so than anything. That's why you have so many people who, for pride and red dress run and all this kind of stuff, they out there. They out there celebrating and embracing who they are. Um, you, got, you got a lot of people that's just living in their truth these days. So toy companies are taking that into consideration that people are having sex and they're having sex with multiples. And you may need to be able to protect your toy. So it does have that covering for the tongue. We have a smaller suction that could go on. And this, this one here goes directly over the clitoris. Directly over. It's not going to pull all your lips in like this one. Right? So this one is called the F5. It is on my website. I recommend you try it out. Let me tell you something. I'm going to get to another part of this video. This weekend was a movie. This toy did excellent at the toy table this weekend. But the people on YouTube, you're actually getting able, you're being able to see the, the demonstration from the, uh, basically what the uh, toy can do, the function of it. Now, I still got to go and do a toy review, meaning that I got to actually use it myself. So, this weekend, I will actually use it myself, but I still wanted to introduce you all to the toy. But let me grab a little water. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, this weekend was a movie. The people from the Dom Experience, they came down and they cut up. They did an excellent job. I couldn't have asked for a better group of people to come down to show Baton Rouge what kink looks like. It was a lot of audience participation. Um, I have evolved. I have evolved over the years from just being a regular fun party host to being able to eat that mic and actually host any type of event with whatever group of people are there. Um, for a long time, I only did events that was for ladies only. This past weekend, the event was co-ed. The event that I'm doing in December, it's co-ed. I'm doing it for a reason. Because it was a lot of people that came out and they used my event for date night. There were a lot of couples that got on the highway and drove from Houston. That drove from Dallas. That flew from Atlanta to come to my event. And that it hit different. It hit different when people walking up to your table and saying, I ordered your book. I want you to sign my book. I drove from wherever to be here tonight. That means so much to me. It means so much to me. Because anybody can get on a website, a wholesale website. And I can get on the website and order 50 of these wholesale, right? And all I do is talk to you about it, test the toy, whatever. And I resell it at a, a price. But that's not something that I had to create. That was just something that I had to get on the website, buy, and resell. I've done that for a very long time. I've made a lot of money in business reselling the products that I've gotten wholesale. 
That, that's what business is about, right? My eyes are running, y'all. But it's another thing for you to literally have an idea and you take that idea and you actually create something and you create it from nothing. It was literally nothing and you created it from nothing. And after you created it, you got the concept of what you wanted a book cover to look like. And then once you put the project with the book cover in, and you send it to the publisher, they send it all back to you put together. And then they send you the copy for the, the, um, the, the sample copy. And you actually get to hold it in your hand. And you get to hold in your hand what you created with someone. Because I didn't do this project alone. This was a project that Daddy and I did together. And, and I just think it's an amazing experience to be able to create with someone. And it's a whole nother thing when people acknowledge the child didn't just put something together. The child actually created something that when it comes down to we, there is power in we. When I was teaching wife school, I always said two is better than one. And I still stick to that. It's always great for people to be a team because guess what? You can be a movement by yourself. You can be great as an individual. Oh, but when you get together, and y'all can actually come together and create something. That's beautiful. I know couples that have been together forever and they both drive individually in their own lane of greatness. And they're both successful in what they do in their own walks of life, right? But it doesn't mean that those couples come together and actually create something outside of their kids and outside of buying a home together and stuff like that. I'm talking about creating something from scratch and people actually appreciate it and they're willing to spend money for it and they actually come out and show you love. That meant the world to me. But there's another point to this because I'm one of those people. I'm very funny about the word friend. Honestly, I have I for a long time never even used it associate. And I and I think at one point on this video, because one thing about Auntie, if she gotta if she gotta scratch it and start over, she's gonna scratch it and start over. I, I was telling y'all maybe this summer I'm trying to get comfortable with the word friend, calling people friend, right? Because I take this so serious. I take it very serious. Because I know what I feel like a friend is. And I know who I am to people that I consider myself to be a friend or a good associate or whatever. And if I'm in your life, I'm going to pour into you in some capacity. This is what I do. Whether it's giving you my time, my energy, whatever. My resources, networking. I'm going to pour into you. Pay attention to who clapped for you. Pay attention because this is my whole thing. If people can get on the highway and drive from Dallas, from Houston, can fly from Atlanta. I had people who were scheduled to go on vacation that I knew that they were scheduled to go on vacation. And I knew that they more than likely would not be able to make it because this vacation was already planned. Who literally changed the date of their flights. To leave out on that Sunday. Just so they could be there for me on that Saturday. That should speak volumes to me. It speaks volumes to me. So when you are a person that I consider to be friend. And you're constantly in my circle. You're constantly in my space. Um, and you don't show up for me for my big one. I make a decision. I make a decision to remove myself from the equation. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I will never allow myself to get used to disappointment. I have been raised by a great family. And the one thing that I ain't never had to get used to was lack or disappointment. I, I'll tell anybody I'm spoiled. I'm used to people showing up for me. I am. I'm used to having a birthday cake every year for my birthday. 
The very first year that I did not have a cake for my birthday was the year that my mama died. The year that my mama died was the very first year that I did not have a cake for my birthday and I flipped the hell out. Because how is it that it's my birthday and it's the one thing that I don't have? So a cake is very important to me for my birthday. And anybody that's in my life at that point, my ex-husband then was like, oh shit, I never knew it was that important because I never had the responsibility of the cake. Your mom always got the cake. Well, now that's your job to get the cake. In other words, I'm not used to disappointment. And I, I kind of isolate myself from people. I don't normally give people access to me or at least to allow them into my, my, uh, my safe space, right? So when I allow people into my safe space, I expect them to show up for me because if you did something, I would definitely show up for you. And when you don't show up for me and you disappoint me, I'm woman enough and honest enough to say that shit changes for me. And I'm not the type of person that's going to be ugly to you or rude to you. I have an attitude, but what I will do is remove myself. From any friend circle or any whatever, I'll remove myself. Because I ain't regular. And I ain't saying that I'm some type of a huge celebrity or anything like that. But we all not going to sit here and pretend that, like, I, like I'm regular. So when people don't show up for your big one like that, for me, it speaks volumes. And it let me know that you're not who you say you are to me. And if I got a question in my mind about who you are to me, I will remove you. That way we ain't got to ever worry about questioning it. When I see you in the streets, hey, how you doing? And I'm going to keep pushing. And I'm going to treat you just like the other people that bought a ticket. You don't get a backstage pass no more. And that's how I live my life. See, I don't set myself up to where people disappoint me over and over again. That's why when the shit that went on, that, that, the, end, the shit that went on that resulted in my divorce, and people was like, oh, I, I would love for you to be a, a speaker for domestic violence. I say, I ain't no domestic violence survivor. That shit is for people that went back over and over again. I got my ass with one time and I moved the fuck around. See, you don't get opportunities over and over and over and over again. Hurt me. I believe you the first time. When you fuck up with me, I believe you the first time. I'm not going to position myself for you to have to do it over and over and over and over again. I'm not going to position myself... For you to have to lie to me and disappoint me over and over and over again and come with excuses over and over and over again. No, no, no. I nip it the first time. That's why I'm able to walk around and be free and I, I'm able to be happy and you don't see no depression on my life. You don't see no frustration on my life. You don't see none of that on my life because I don't allow all the heavy shit around me. I nip it the first time. People say, well, Sharonda, you don't forgive? Yes, I forgive. I forgive and I tell people, even God forgave. God forgave Adam and Eve, but they still had to get the fuck out the garden. I forgive, but you gotta get the fuck from around me. And that's how I live my life. That's how I keep my peace. Because I don't like having a wonder about nothing. Right? So, that's gonna wrap me up for today, y'all. Y'all pray for your auntie. Pray that I get my voice back. The tickets for Kinks must it's co-ed, y'all. Kinks tickets are on the website. www.dppgstore.com Kinks tickets are on the website. That's going to be a show that I'm doing um, December the 7th. It is a naughty Santa show. Um, of course, I'm asking everybody to come dressed out in character. Come as Santa. Come as Mrs. Claus. Come as the Grinch. Come as a reindeer. Come as a damn graham cracker. Oh, uh, not a graham cracker. Uh, um, one of them cookies. Come as a lip gingerbread. Come as a gingerbread man. Come as whatever you want to come as, but keep it sexy. This should be very fun and very creative. Um, there will be a lot of kink going on. There will be spankings going on. There will be wax play going on. There will be uh, roping going on. It's going to be a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of Right, and this is a co ed event, and I'm looking forward to hosting another kink event. One thing that I saw this past weekend is the city will come out, 
they'll come out for something different. See, they got people out there that they do. Uh, I was talking to uh, somebody I work with, and I was like, you know, they got people that do the live bands, people that do the stuff for the steppers, the swing out, the trail ride, the Zydeco, all that kind of stuff. I think it's uh, all promoters have their own niche, right? My niche is adult entertainment, and I don't stray away from that. They recently had an all-black party here in our city that sold out in two days. And the concept is like five different DJs and a bunch of different hosts and all of that kind of stuff. And I think that's great for the people who want to do that. I think that's great. I like live adult entertainment. I like when you leave there that you say you saw some shit, that it was a good time, and that you turned all the way up and that you felt comfortable and you stepped outside of your comfort zone and you learned something new. Those are the type of events that I throw. I don't throw a, a, a party with just having DJs there and people on the mic hosting. And I'm saying that that's not a good time because you could, I've been to the, the masquerade balls and all that and had a great time. It's just that the events that I throw, they are different. It's, it's some shit you ain't seen before. Okay? So get your ticket. Come on. You still got time. I'm about to get ready to start my day. Don't forget, F5 is on the website. You all be blessed.